Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I was looking at my board and I was looking at a few different like kind of corsetry level projects that I was interested in doing in the next, let's be realistic, a year. <laughs> because things are slow around here. However, I thought to myself that it was time to make some new lacing strips. I have a pair, they're kind of drunk. <laughs> so I thought I would make a new pair and I thought I would show you guys how to make lacing strips while I'm at it. What are lacing strips, you ask? Lacing strips are essentially this section of a corset. And the reason that you would want to have something like this pre-made and separate from any kind of corsetry is for when you're making mock-ups. So when you make your mock-up, you can make all of the rest of it and you get to this point and then you stop and you sew in lightly the lacing strip. That way, when you're making your mock-ups, because sometimes you have to make three or four mock-ups, you don't have to continually grommet them, you don't have to make eyelets, you don't have to do any of those things in every single mock-up. You can just stitch in a pair of lacing strips and carry on with your fitting process. I found lacing strips extremely helpful in the past and I would highly suggest making a pair if you are a person who wants to make a bunch of corsets, who even really wants to make one corset or two corsets and who's just starting out because you probably will have a bunch of mock-ups that you need to do and this will save you so much time. <laughs> so I highly recommend this project. Let's get into what you're gonna need for this though. Okay, I have a previous corset here, but you don't actually need this because I'm just using this to measure how much space you need to, to do this and so I'm gonna tell you that information. So you don't need a previous corset. This is Coutille, this is what I'm gonna use to make these. You can use any strong, non-stretch kind of fabric. I highly recommend something like Coutille, Double Herringbone Twill, Canvas. Uh, this is made out of ticking, but it does have Coutille on the inside, but you can absolutely just use ticking. Any kind of strong canvas-like object will work for this. You want it to not stretch in any way, though. You will also need a ruler, for sure, and a marking utensil. I'm going to use these Frixion pens. You can use whatever you want. doesn't matter if you draw all over these. If you want to just use a pen, a-okay. I am also going to use boning. I'm using steel boning, that's why I have my boning roll out here. Uh, you can use zip ties, you can use anything you want that you are going to normally use in your corset. I, of course, recommend you use steel slash synthetic well bone. No shade on the zip ties though, they are perfectly effective for a pair of lacing strips. You just want to make sure that they're very sturdy and that they can stay straight because of all the seams in your, your corset, this is the one that you want to make sure stays the straightest. All of these can bend a lot. This is the one that you want to keep. Uh, not necessarily this way, but this way. I'm going to show you some extra stuff that I have here that I'm going to use, and uh, I'm going to show you some ways around it. This is a lacing hole guide that my friend Sarai made. I've talked about this before. It just helps me mark lacings. You can absolutely just use a regular ruler. No stress. Uh, I will link this down below in case you enjoy the use of this and want to order one of these yourself. I'm going to use my new grommet press, which I've never used before, so this is going to be a bit of an experiment for me as well. You obviously don't need a grommet press. There are two other options you can use. Actually, there's there's more than that. You can also use a grommet kit. These are not very expensive. I think they're under $10. And then you'll need some grommets. I am using size 00 grommets. There are smaller grommets that I sometimes use in corsets, which are 000. These ones are bigger and they allow leasing to go through. You can use even bigger ones if you want. Use whatever ones you can find. That's all good. I will link to some resources down below for all of these things if you would like to purchase them. There's also a way to make eyelets on your Janome machine. This video is kindly sponsored by Janome, so I'm going to be talking about my machine a bit in this video. But my machine in particular has an eyelet feature and you can use that to just make eyelets if that is what you'd prefer slash don't want to spend money on this. I almost forgot that you're going to need an awl. For this particular project, I really like this awl because I know that if I get all the way down here, if I push all the way through, this is exactly how big I need the hole to be to push a size 00, zero grommet through, and that's just from my own personal knowledge. This is a general number 818 in case you wanted to know, but I've had this for a really long time, so I think this was like my mom's awl as I was growing up, <laughs> and I just snatched it when I left. Okay, here we have my corset. And I'm going to do a little bit of measuring here. This first slot looks like about 3 8 The grommet location looks like about an half an inch and then another 3 8 for the second steel boning. And this is how it goes. There's a steel here and then the grommets and then another steel here. And then you're going to want some space. So this guy 
is approximately three and a half inches wide to here and that seems like a good amount okay the other measurement i'm gonna want is the length of this and that's just kind of an eyeball situation this one's about 14 inches i do tend to make a lot of victorian level corsets so this is a good length i might add another inch to it maybe two so that i have the opportunity to do edwardian or even teens era corsets which are of course significantly longer you should make the size for the corsets that you may want to make i would always suggest to go slightly longer rather than shorter without being say ridiculously long because the fit at the top and bottom edge of the back is something you are going to want to look at so it is helpful if it is as at least as long as the course that you are about to make okay this is my boning roll i made this actually as my last project for janami so i will link that above and below for you should you want to check out how i made this to some extent i'm going to allow the boning that i have available to me dictate how long these are so let's see what we got here we got some 14s we have one 15 i'm looking for these straight steel ones and we have we have three 15 and a half and i know i wanted something around 16 so i think it's fine if one of them's a little shorter i'm not that fussed about it it doesn't really matter a quarter or an inch on each end is not going to matter too much so that's fine i think i'm going to use these four because you will need four of these okay let's do a little math to figure out what we need we need a length of let's say 16 inches because it's 15 and a half for the larger one and then we had we need to figure out our width so we had one that was three eighths and then one that was a half and another one that was three eighths cool and we decided we needed the whole thing to be about three and a half inches wide so really I need at least three and a half and then I need to add these up again but it doesn't really have to be exact so we can really just call this an inch and a half and that would be fine so if we had three and a half and an inch and a half that equals five inches and this is the width that we will need to cut the cutiel so that we can fold it in half sew the channels and have enough to be able to stitch onto your corset Okay, so I have this piece of cutile. It already has a chunk cut out, so essentially what I'm gonna do is measure five inches in and mark that all the way down. I've already checked that this is longer than 16 inches. This ruler is 17 inches and it is much longer, so this will be a perfect piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. Okay, so you probably can't see this because I've picked up a bunch, but this thing is just shutting like crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and zigzag around all the edges just to keep everything nice and tidy for the rest of time. And then we'll start folding and marking. Okay, let's do a quick zigzag. Turning on this machine. This is my, and I want to say new, but it's really not that new. I got it about seven months ago. Janome Continental M7 and I freaking love this machine. By the way, this light here is turned down so that I can film. Let me show you what it looks like when I let that roll. Just gonna turn on all the other lights. It makes my entire background go dark. It is so bright. This machine has military grade lighting on it and I freaking love that. I think it's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little zigzag around the edge now. Enjoy your time lapse. Okay, I wanted to talk through a little bit about what I was pushing during that. You may have seen me pushing my top speed around. I like to adjust the top speed that it will let me go at, and that's if you push all the way down on the pedal. This allows you to change how fast that stitch is. I normally like to keep it somewhere in the middle, but if I'm doing long straightaway zigzags or something like that, I kick it up to the top. This has like pretty high stitch count, very close to what an industrial machine would have. Not quite, but 
the fastest one on the market as far as I know. I was also lifting my foot with this button here, which I find very convenient, and it has a snip button, which cuts off your thread and lifts the foot for you, which is absolutely fantastic. I totally love this part of the machine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and fold this in half-ish and just walk it until you get it to about three and a half inches. I cut a little extra quarter inch in there, so it's not actually mission critical that it be exact. You just wanna have enough to create the boning channels with, but it's not a crisis if you have too much. And then I just press those in, and then I'll take the pins out, and I'll give the whole thing a solid press. Hit it with some steam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the marks that I need, and... I'm gonna do that by going three eighths up all the way across and using my Frixion pen, just marking that. Hi, I can figure out how to try to open this up. And yep, I am just marking right on the thing, but it's Frixion, so it'll come off. And then a half an inch from there. Cool. And then three eighths inch from there. Ooh, that went off the rails. But you know what? It don't matter because it's gonna come off. Cool. And then I'm gonna go sew these channels and then I will have the boning channels. All right, I have marked this on both pieces because they're both exactly the same and I am ready to go ahead and stitch the boning channels in. I've chosen option number two here because it has an automatic back stitch on the front and end of this stitch. So it's a fantastic feature of this machine. Okay, for the other side, I actually want to try out the HP foots and the HP plates. There's different plates that you can get for this machine. It comes with three of them. And what it does is it actually makes it so that this plate can only do straight stitching. And part of what it does when you use this foot is it takes the needle and puts it exactly in line with where the bobbin comes out. If you, if you were to look into this hole right here, you would see that the bobbin is at sort of an angle to the thread and it comes in and that is because this needle can move all over the place right because this is a foot and a plate that is allowing it to f do free range quilting motion it can do zigzag and can do all sorts of things this plate doesn't allow that but what it will allow you to do is put the bobbin straight in line with the stitching and that gives you a smoother and ever so slightly straighter stitch Okay, so this foot actually also acts as a walking foot, which is even more helpful when you're trying to get the most pristine stitch possible. So this all should come out beautifully. It has drastically limited the amount of stitches I'm allowed to do because it senses that the HP plate is in here and it knows that I can't do anything but straight stitch. So it only gives me those as an option. So that's a really great feature.
Okay, so now I have gone to this center section, which is where the grommets go. Remember the first section of 3 8 inch is for a piece of steel boning. The center section is for grommets and the third section is for another piece of steel boning to go into. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the grommets with this line. It is very helpful to go ahead and have a line to, to start with so you know exactly where the centers are. I'm going to use this tool that my friend Sarai made that I will link down below for you if you'd like to purchase one to mark the centers of the holes and I'm just doing one inch. You can do whatever you want. This particular lacing guide has half an inch, three quarters of an inch, and full one inch centers and that's from center of dot to center of dot so that you can use whatever method that makes you happy. I don't think that they need to be that close just for fittings, so just marking them. And one great thing about this is you can use previously done dots in order to go ahead and mark the ones that you have left to mark. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for both of them and I'm gonna make sure they match is the very important part. So if you put the other one here, I know I started one inch in from here because I laid this ruler down so that it was right on the edge. So I can do the same on this side. I'm going to go ahead and draw this line in and then mark that one. Okay, we have them both marked. Next what I'm going to do is take an awl and I'm going to go ahead and make a little poke through from this side right on that dot just to essentially mark it. And then I'm going to flip it to the right side because this is the side that you want to be going in through. And I'm going to very gently work it back and forth until it gets pretty deep into this all, which makes a hole about the size of the grommet. And it's much easier if you just use your all to make the hole the size that you need it rather than having to fight it later. You definitely want to use an awl if possible, and what that does is it moves the threads to the sides of the hole rather than cutting them. You can use a punch, but if you cut the fibers, especially if you keep cutting them all the way down, you're losing strength from that. And using an awl to just push the fibers apart from each other helps uh, maintain the strength. And this is something that's going to take a bunch of strain, so you do want it to have it be as strong as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a grommet and push it in there. And that's, that's why I pushed it in so far was see how easy that went in. I didn't have to move very many fibers at all. But if you do have any, just move them to the side. And if you have to, you can use your, your tip of your awl to go ahead and help you move them. And then you're ready for grommeting. And I'm going to go ahead and do my inaugural grommet press with this new grommet press. I'm excited. Alright, so there are 15 holes on each side, so I'm going to need to do that 29 more times, and then I'll have 30 grommets, and I will have a pair of lacing strips, and they will be all done, and that is fantastic. You can bind the edges if you want to, you can zigzag them some more, you can do this in a myriad of different variations, however you want them finished. I don't need them super finished to just be functional for corset mock-up try-ons. I will tell you a word of warning, the way to make these look super drunk is to not watch how you're using your awl. It's not really how you're setting your grommet, it's the hole that you're punching with your awl that will make these wander all over the place. Mine are never ever perfectly straight, so don't stress out too much if yours aren't either. It's not going to hurt your ability to try on your mock-ups if they're off a little bit, so just be warned. I'm going to go ahead and grommet the rest of them, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to simultaneously, through the movie magic of YouTube, show you another option for making holes. Okay, I would like to draw your attention to the second area here in which we have button holes and buttons looks like. Uh, if you come down here though, you can see number 18, 19, 20, 
21 and 22 are all eyelets, and eyelets are something that you can use for lacing strips if you'd like to. They probably won't last as long and they'll stretch out definitely a lot more, but if you don't want to deal with grommets, can't afford them, whatever, you can definitely use that with this machine. I'm going to switch out to a black top thread so you can see what's going on and give you a couple of tips about that. Alright, I've switched to number 18. It is not the one I prefer and I'll show you why right now. So I like to go ahead and unplug my foot and then just use the start stop button on my machine for this. So I'm going to go ahead and run one through so you can see this eyelet. So this is a perfectly beautiful eyelet. However, it's rather small and when lacing up lacing strips you kind of want more room than that. I found that I actually prefer number 20 more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to make it as big as possible which is size 3. So that got a little wonky because I completely let go of it, <laughs> but you can see that it's a much bigger hole. It's definitely an oval. I'm going to show you another little pro tip that I like, which is that you can go around these things twice. Uh, you can probably go around as many times as you'd like. I enjoy a little bit more security to mine, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. The single eyelet is perfectly safe. It is just as strong as you're going to need. It's not a problem to use that. I just like a little extra. And here's what that looks like. It's a little bit deeper, thicker. Then you can take your awl and just push right through there and it will stretch this thread out a little bit and make you a beautiful hole. Here's what that looks like all punched through with an awl. You, much easier to lace. Uh, you will get some threads that will snap and that's okay. And you'll get some threads that kind of try to make their way back through. You can just all the holes right before you do it every time and you'll be good to go and no need to grommet if you don't want to. Okay, so the lacing strips are done, and if I were to put them on top of each other, these holes do line up, which is fantastic. It's exactly what I want to happen. The only thing you really need to do now is go ahead and put the boning in. So I'm going to make sure the short one is on the outside of one. You just slide this in here, and you do it in all four channels that you need boning, and then I'm going to go ahead and run a little zigzag stitch along the tops of, and bottoms of both of these. And then this whole project is complete. And there we have it. A nice pair of lacing stays. Quick and easy project that will save you so much time and energy if you are making corsets and needing to do a bunch of mock-ups. These make it so that you don't have to grommet every single one of your mock-ups. Highly, highly, highly recommend making one of these even if this is your first time corseting. This will also help get you in the mode for corseting because it teaches you about sewing the channels and parallel lines, the grommeting is already done, a bunch of this uh, is things that you're going to use for corseting anyway and it's a good practice place to sort of get into that groove. So I do highly recommend making these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much to Janome for sponsoring me and for my big beautiful machine which I love with all of my soul. If you have any questions about that machine feel free to shoot me the questions and I will try to get them answered for you. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time with another video. Bye guys!